Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, boys. How's it going? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. How are you guys? Alhamdulillah, bro. Bro, I don't know, Sam, is that the is that the nur or the lighting on your face, man? Mashallah. <laughs> Abibi, this is a lie. I wish it was not. I wish it was not. It's the lie. <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, so, man, before we go in, we got a little bit of uh, some comments. Uh, let's mm. go through them. And uh, while we do that, tell us a little bit about your story, man. A lot of people are wondering this. Uh, this handsome brother, mashallah, that they got on the podcast. I want to know more about him. So yeah. let's let's say you want to give like a quick summary about your life. Bismillah. From the beginning. From the beginning, man. Tell us everything oh. we want to know. Insha'Allah, insha'Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa ba'd. So, my name's Sam. Uh, I was born in Kilburn, northwest London. And then uh, shortly afterwards, we moved to Brighton. So, Brighton is a predominantly white area, like uh, by the sea. Um... And I was raised in a non-religious uh, household. So my mom was raised a Christian, but it was more of a religion by name. Um, and my dad grew up in a Jewish household, but he's always been a staunch atheist. So we never really spoke about religion uh, whatsoever. Um, so it didn't really become a, a, a big issue uh, for me or an important issue until I got older. Um, so yeah, uh, I won't mention too much about my life in uh, school time and stuff like this, but I do feel that there's benefit uh, to, you know, acknowledging that my character was very different back then. Um, and one important aspect that I'll mention is I grew up very quickly, um, matured at a young age, and I had a lot of independence from early on. Um, so I think this gave me a lot of time to think about life. And things like this. Um, by the way, if I'm waffling, just stop me. But, you know, um, we'll, we'll carry on, inshallah. So, uh, as I got into my early teenage years, um, this is when I got into involved in, you know, the normal lifestyle of uh, clubbing, drinking, smoking, stuff like this. Um, and often it was leading to, to fighting or getting put in other bad predicaments. So, the first kind of turning point in my life for me was one night I came home, you know, normal clubbing, drinking, and I must have had a few fights on, on this specific occasion. And I came home and I had uh, broken ligaments in my hands and I had blood on my clothes. And I was thinking to myself, there must be more to life than this. This can't be it. And I was thinking, you know, why am I here? What's my purpose? What happens after I die? Um, and all these sorts of questions. Um, and something interesting to note is that I, as a young child, I do remember, you know, distinctly having thoughts about the creator, like having conviction that a higher being existed. Um, because any time I wanted something or needed something, I'd always ask the creator to provide. Um, but because of these uh, the questions, I had uh, questions I had anyway. I started to watch debates uh, and discussions surrounding these topics. Um, and at this point, although I had conviction that a higher being existed, uh, I was convinced that religions were man-made constructs used by the minority to control the majority. And I still believe this with regards to a lot of religions uh, to this day. So some of the main arguments that strengthened my conviction in the creator at this time were Firstly, the contingency argument. And secondly, the fine-tuning argument. So, yeah, brothers, do you want to give a little input onto those? Ahi, Habibi, one thing I just want to say before Rami jumps in. Yeah. When you were saying you were young and, and you just you just always had that conviction, bro. Yeah. All I could say is fitra, bro. There's Sorry. nothing else to say, bro. You don't need that. Well, you don't need, and I'm talking about like the early primitive stages, you know, you don't need every, you know, you don't need to be born in the perfect family and all that. Fitra is always there, bro. It's so true. Well, it's very true. MashaAllah. Uh, going on the contingency argument, I mean, it's basically just an argument for God that uh, anything that comes from another thing, uh, you can't have an infinite chain of that. You can't have everything comes from something else. There must be something that always existed. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, and this is a very powerful argument, I think I brought, you know, myself and many other people 
uh, even if we believed in God, just strengthen that Iman. And again, Iman is like rational conviction. It's not faith. It's not, oh, I just believe. Iman is like, I, I'm convicted based off rationality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, subhanAllah, it, it does kind of bring you to that state, 100%. So, uh, yeah, you're at that point where you got that uh, that little argument presented to you, and mashallah, it strengthened your yeah. iman. Yeah, yeah. So where to go from there? Alhamdulillah. So, so yeah, the, so the mere belief that a creator existed, like it was uh, okay for me for a while, like it was sufficient. But then I began to question more and more about my purpose, why I was here, and I began to to ask this creator, this this higher power, uh, for guidance, and. Shortly after this, uh, I bumped into an old school friend that I hadn't seen for a long time. Um, and it was very random, like we didn't arrange to meet or anything. But when we met up, uh, we we talked and we did, we arranged to meet up again. Um, and at this point, we began to discuss these topics and it would go on for hours nonstop. Uh, you know, me asking him questions, him replying. Um, and he'd mentioned Islam to me. and He, he mentioned Islam. Um, and at this point, I'd been told about Islam before by other people, but uh, they weren't practicing the religion themselves. So I never took them seriously. This was my mm. outlook back then. Like, if you're not practicing the religion yourself, then why am I going to listen to what you've got to say? You know, um, so there were, yeah, there were a few things that, that stuck out to me about, about this friend, like a few of his characteristics and how he was such as, he was very principled. He had a lot of discipline as well. And this was something that I really valued before Islam. Um, and I think this was one of the reasons that I did take him seriously and I did listen to him. So, uh, yeah, and, and just other things, like he was kind, he lowered his gaze to, to the opposite, opposite gender, which was something very different to me as well. I'd never seen this before. Um, and obviously he prayed five times a day. He fasted in uh, Ramadan and uh, all, all these things like this. So... Yeah, although this was, uh, this stuck out to me a lot and it was very profound to me, um, I still wanted to shrug it off and I wanted to have my own relationship with God that didn't involve me being dictated to or me being told how to live my life. Me, you know, I wanted to still follow my desires in, in that sense. Um, kind of in the same manner as deism, like they believe in, in the higher power, but they believe that higher power has no... Uh, control over their life or doesn't want anything from them doesn't care about how they treat others um, and stuff like this but something within me just wouldn't accept this and it didn't fit right with me um, so looking back I, I wasn't a nice person I wasn't kind to my parents um, I didn't have a sense of sympathy or empathy for others and weirdly during this period of time when I did begin to question my purpose and, and my existence um, I began to feel a sense of guilt uh, when I did certain things um, and I, I felt that I'd be held accountable for these things um, even if people weren't there I knew that the higher power was was witnessing this um, so yeah in my own time I began to research more and more and uh, I thought to myself if this creator or higher power exists then there must be a, a reason behind our, our creation so a few weeks passed and my friend and I met up again. Uh, and as we were driving back in his car, he says, I've got something for you. And I say, what is it? And then he gives me a translation of the Quran. And at this point, I was making up so many excuses about why I don't want this. <laughs> I was like, no, I'll just download the app on my phone or uh, I don't need to read this. Um, you know, but he ended up convincing me and I ended up taking it. And it sat in my drawer in my room for a while uh, until finally I opened it up, maybe probably, you know, a few weeks later. And the first thing I noticed was was the English was extremely old and it was a hard read. It was a hard read for me because I wasn't really used to reading books at this point. However, it did make me ponder and it wasn't like any other normal book that I'd read before. Uh, you know, it, ha it spoke of things that I'd never even heard of before, such as uh, the day of judgment or jinn or angels heaven and hell stuff like this um so yeah it was very profound uh, so I, ca I continued my research uh reading about different religions watching uh, academic debates uh, speakers corner discussions speakers corner played a huge role a huge role for me um and the common theme that struck me was that i'd never seen 
a Muslim struggle to defend their position, whilst all other uh, interlocutors or, or other uh, uh, apologists would uh, be challenged on their positions by Muslims and fail to uphold them. Uh, so I did more research into different religions and I started to notice problems within them. For example, a religion that claims its holy book is from the creator, yet it has contradictions, historical errors, multiple versions. Or for example, a religion that requires you to be born into a certain lineage for you to be eligible to follow it. Or uh, a religion that requires the worship of multiple all-powerful beings, which is uh, obviously an an impossibility, a logical impossibility. So uh, I got to the conclusion that the only religion that was rational and coherent was Islam. So uh, when it came to Islam, every single answer you could require was there and not a stone was left unturned. You know, the Quran had been preserved for over 1,400 years since the time it was first revealed with no errors, no contradictions, prophecies of the future, scientific discoveries, unknown facts about history and 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 so much more. Um, so during this period of time, I met up with my friend again. And this time we were joined by our old school friends. Uh, and we hadn't seen them in a while either. So we began discussing uh, the topic of Islam. And my friend mentioned to me the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, and these prophecies blew my mind. These were amazing to me. Like, uh, I'd never heard anything like this before. Like, how could a man 1,400 years ago predict things that have only just started happening now in recent history? Um, and this led to, to me defending Islam, even though I had no affiliation to it. Like, I would be defending Islam, even though I wasn't Muslim at this point. Um, so, yeah, this, this day really triggered my research into the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, and I found YouTube discussions and I found uh, articles and things like this. And I found a claim using deductive reasoning, which was presenting three options. And it challenged people to bring forth another option if there was one possible. And it said either this man, peace be upon him, was lying about his claim he was deluded or he was telling the truth and if he wasn't lying and if he wasn't deluded then logic dictates that he was telling the truth um so as for him being a liar uh, he was known his whole life for his whole life up until delivering the message as the truthful one um and if he was lying he would need a motive so he was offered power, he was offered money, he was offered anything he could want, and he refused to give up this message. When faced, Even when faced with severe persecution and uh, the companions being tortured. As for him being deluded, a deluded man cannot conjure prophecies of the future, scientific discoveries, uh, unknown historical facts, or recite eloquent uh, recitations with over 40 rhetorical devices used in three, sec three sentences, you know? Mm. So he was telling the truth and anyone who adopts the same consistency as they do when it comes to uh, other non-religious matters, they'll also accept this. So soon after this, my friend asked me to come to Friday prayer, so uh, Jumar, and I agreed, uh, although I was very hesitant at the time. Um, <laughs> uh, so it was the first time I'd been to a mosque in my life. Um, but one of the first things I noticed when I walk in when I walked in was that there were, you know, every single ethnicity was there, like every single different type of, of person was there. And at this point, I had the opinion that this religion was only for Arabs. So this was something strange to me as well. So at this point, I'd already been intellectually convinced that Islam was the truth. Uh, and now I'd felt the spirituality aspect for the first time. And I remember reading, obviously recently, I remember reading something by Al Ghazali, and he mentioned that true conviction is is not just intellectually sought. There has to be a spiritual action uh, aspect as well uh, to back this up. So th that was something very uh, profound to me as well. So anyway, after that that uh, Friday, around a week later, uh, I was working and I got invited to go to one of the brothers' houses to eat during Ramadan. 
so obviously they'd been fasting all day they were very hungry and uh, and uh, stuff like that and even even though they were so hungry i was offered food straight away you know all these brothers that brothers that i'd never met before uh, greeting me asking how i am how's family how's this how's uh, uni how's you know and it was very strange because i'd never seen this before in my life like how i grew up if you don't know someone then you you don't really care about them you don't ask how they are how their family are like stuff mm. like this so it was very uh, strange to me but very nice at the same time um and i also noticed again like all these brothers they were united under one common thing and that was islam like even if they had nothing else in common they had islam and that's what brought them together so the same evening after we ate we went to the mosque for tarawih and we prayed for about 2 hours straight bear in mind i was non muslim at this point but i was still standing in prayer for for 2 hours straight and i remember standing there and i was thinking about like every sin- single situation that i'd been in in my life um and thinking about my conviction in islam and i was thinking about the reasons that were stopping me from accepting islam because i was completely convinced that islam was the truth at this point um and the only thing stopping me was other people's perceptions of me that's what i came to the conclusion of um and at this point i thought back to a conversation that i had with my friend when we were sitting in his, sitting in his car and he told me we're going to die you know very simple statement he said we are going to die and i remember in prayer i was thinking to myself that every single person that is alive right now are going to be dead in a hundred years every single person is going to be dead and on my deathbed the last thing i'm going to care about is what other people think of me so there's no reason for me not to accept islam so after prayer finished uh, we were about to leave the mosque and my friend comes up to me just you know about to leave like about to say okay let's get in the car let's drive back and i said two words to him i said i'm ready and he was like ready for he thought I was joking he said he's ready for he was confused i said i'm ready to accept islam and he laughed he was like what do you mean you're ready to accept islam and i said no i'm serious i'm ready to accept islam and he said to come to the front so we went to the front of the the mosque in front of a lot of people because it's ramadan it's tarawih it's busy like uh, 40 30 40 people at least um so we went to the front and he said repeat after me he said ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah and i repeated the words after him obviously i couldn't pronounce anything so <laughs> he said repeat after me in english and i said he said i bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except allah and i bear witness that muhammad is his messenger and i repeated after him uh so i was 19 at the time and it's now been around two and a half years and that's my story mashallah habibi it's only been two and a half years Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> man, Rami, bro, what's on your mind? That was because I dare say that was one of the best revert stories that I've heard, man. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. It was beautiful. It was very smooth. SubhanAllah, it seems like. Obviously, everyone has their bumps, but, you know, mm-hmm. rational conviction, logical conviction, you're intellectually there, you go to the masjid, you're spiritually there, and then it's like, khalas, this is, this is it. Mashallah. It is very heartwarming. SubhanAllah. May Allah bless you, Habib. My friend, um, yeah. My first question is, are you still close to the brothers today? I'm still very much close to the brothers, alhamdulillah. Very. Have you, do you think you would have accepted Islam without seeing that brotherhood, that connection? I don't think so. I mean, this friend was a, you know, a huge, huge uh, component to me accepting Islam. Um, like, yeah, like once you see the brotherhood, this is, this is a really big... Uh, uh, indicator of the truth of Islam because nothing unites people like this, you know. Yeah, one hundred percent. And the there are ayat in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala specifically tells us either to stay together or not to depart from each other. Mm. Uh, it actually gives us a way to resolve conflicts. Uh, he says, uh, uh, I forget the ayah specifically, but he basically says if two groups of Muslims are fighting, then stop the one that's oppressing. Until they come basically back to the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's mm. it's very beautiful, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it made it very, very clear for us that we have to unite as brothers to stay very close. And the reason I ask that is because 
of those ayat. So alhamdulillah, it's very beautiful to hear that. Because there are a lot of reverts, unfortunately, uh, that they don't have that. And because they don't have that, they end up leaving. I honestly genuinely believe that that's the one thing that if people have, they will stay in Islam. And if they don't, they will be heavily, heavily pushed to leave. Because no amount of logical or rational conviction can really hold people unless they have that that social aspect, that emotional bonding, uh, which is... It's very true, though. It's very true. Very, very true. Like the first the first year or, or even two years, you're very um, vulnerable in a sense because the people around you are, are going to um, influence you heavily. Um, and if you don't have that Islamic, you know, the fundamental education at the beginning, you can go pretty off track. So alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, so sorry for that, bro. Take it away. No, me, bro. Go on, man. You had something on your mind. You yeah. see me shaking. I'm cold. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we've had storms in in the UK. So, you uh, are you still in Brighton right now? Yes, yes, yes. What's the What's the weather at, bro? Man, it's crazy. Like it's storm. We've, everything's been blowing away. Trees are falling down. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, bro. Uh, a brother in the UK just sent me a video on TikTok, and he was talking about the end times. He said that um, basically. They don't get that kind of weather in the UK. That mm -hmm. you don't get that, these kind of natural disaster type events, you know, hurricanes and all that stuff. And he mentioned that there's been a warning that hurricanes coming to the UK. And he's like, "This is the sign of the end times." And he showed a wall. He's like, "This wall has been standing up forever, and it's just a bunch of bricks like laying on the floor because it's been completely toppled." Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. So even mm -hmm. in the sign, may Allah protect you guys. Amin ya Rab. Amin. Amin ya Amin, bro. One thing on my mind right now that you said i really want to know this yeah. and i think this might benefit viewers that are reverts uh, non-muslims or just born muslims or just no matter where they are bro you mentioned al-ghazali talked about the benefits of balancing spirituality and, and that intellectual conviction right yeah for someone like yourself i want to know your first-hand anecdotal experience what really helped you get that spirituality because intellectuality can come or you know being intellectually convicted can come from anything bro it can come from youtube videos it can come from taking a course it can come from reading books but no matter how learned one is they might not have that spiritual side so what really was a pivotal role in helping you and like you can give me more than one thing that's an uh, amazing question mashallah so I think the main thing for me was that Allah, you know, the higher power always answered my uh, my prayers. Like even before Islam, for example, when I was asking for guidance, what happened? I bumped into my friend and we, we start discussing Islam. Or when I'm uh, asking for guidance and I'm coming across uh, reading material or, or videos and, and things like this. So I think first-hand experience of... Uh, your prayers being answered is a very very uh, big aspect of spirituality for me so yeah alhamdulillah alhamdulillah rami bro do you remember what was on your mind uh well firstly i want to pull up this, this comment from the sister um who mentioned mm -hmm. the ayah Quran. so it's surah 49 verse 9 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is a translation but still uh, paraphrasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if two groups of the believers fight each other seek re reconciliation between them and if one of them commits aggression or oppression mm -hmm. against the other fight that uh fight the one that commits oppression subhanallah so it's very mm -hmm. clear it's very beautiful subhanallah you know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even gives us a formula to stop fighting you know well it's, it's beautiful i'm trying to remember what i what i was going to say before it was a question but um regardless let's move mm -hmm. on inshallah How, what other roadblocks do you think that you had on the revert story and after you reverted mm -hmm. for any roadblocks okay so before islam i i don't think it was anything else than people's perceptions of me because you know my family although they may not be happy with me i knew they would not disown me kick me out of the house or anything like this alhamdulillah so i think mainly it would be people's perceptions of me when i accept islam and maybe the relationships I'd have to cut off once I did accept Islam um, and the friendship, you know, or things that would not be normal to me, such as going out, drinking, clubbing, uh, you know, partying, I'd have to cut these off. So probably these would be the hardest things for me. 
And as for now, alhamdulillah, I don't think I have any, which is a big, big blessing. So, yeah, alhamdulillah. 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 So how about after the reversion in the last two and a half years? Were there any roadblocks or what were some of the more, you know, monumental moments, the, the ups in the last two and a half years as well? To be honest, everything's been up. Well, like everything, everything's been up. Um, you know, we all go through hard hardships, but when you have Islam, you have, you know, you have something that keeps you grounded. You have something that gives you reason for every single thing that happens to you. No, you know, no matter how small it is, if you drop your water bottle as you're walking outside, you know there's a reason for this. No matter how small the thing is, and you know the biggest calamities that happen to you, these are for a reason also. And you know that everything that happens to you, you're gonna be rewarded for it in the hereafter. So this is something, you know. Uh, amazing this is an amazing thing from the religion alhamdulillah alhamdulillah bro i gotta ask you this yes. do you think and and you know what no i'll just ask you bro if you feel comfortable obviously do you do you want to tell us where your relationship is now with everyone like i'm assuming you know your family they all know you know maybe they they and you told me you know they're they're definitely uh, it's progressive, right? But how did that go, bro? How did you tell them or the rest of your family or friends that you were at the time? I know you said that, you know, it was something that was uh, a hurdle for you to overcome, you know, caring what other people think, the external reinforcement validation. So how did you overcome that? What did you do? Uh, so as for the first point, um, in regards to friends and family now, well, and how they found out. So unlike other reverts or converts I actually told my family straight away so I think either the same day or the the morning after maybe so I accept Islam in the in the mosque for Tarawih right after the prayer and I think by the morning I told my dad already so <laughs> I remember I walked in and I said dad I've got something to tell you um and I've never seen someone so scared in my life. I'm sure my dad's watching this right now, or I'll send it to him uh, soon, inshallah. But yeah, he's his face dropped, like his face uh, physically dropped. And he said, I, can't, I don't think he even spoke. He did, his face dropped. So I think the media plays a big, big role in this. Um, and I can't blame him for how he felt and stuff like that. But yeah, um, it was fine. Like it, 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 although he wasn't happy he accepted it um i didn't get kicked out of the house i was still allowed to live there um, and as for my mom because they live separately um so my mom uh, you know mashallah she's uh, she's always happy with with my decisions so you know she was very happy for me alhamdulillah um and friends as well they were happy as well you know um obviously it meant that i couldn't do the same things i would normally do with them uh i'd have to distance myself a little bit but you know i've i've got very good relationships with my non-muslim friends up until now and inshallah the relationships will stay stay like this as well inshallah so when you said you got to distance yourself you already know what we're talking about anyone watching this it's a daily fitna bro wallahi you know uh not being overly judgy towards people but just saying you know what i can't hang out with you you know if you're gonna do this i can't partake in this if you're gonna go there i can't do it you know and and i get it bro it's it's tough bro so definitely but here's the thing this is the beauty of it we all have that choice and may allah keep us among the ones that see it as an easy choice bro i mean and not something like oh man i can't do this i can't do that you know yeah Allah, i mean and you know subhanallah a lot of the time if you look at a lot of the time when you put things in a non-religious perspective people don't have an issue with it it's like oh you know these group of friends they um they go drinking and i can't drink because if i drink you know it's going to kill me one day uh everyone's going to tell you like if they're not going to give it up for you if they're not if they're going to keep inviting you stay away from them and everyone's going to praise that person if someone has people holding them back from their dreams in a very liberal way um that, you know i want to go for my dreams and blah 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 they're going to tell them drop your friends but as soon as we say that you know, I'm going to drop these people because they don't align with my beliefs as a Muslim. All of a sudden, like, you know, people lose their mind. So I think that kind of perspective is really important to have. It'll, you know, I think it'll give people a sense of strength as well in leaving these people behind. Because at the end of the day, uh, if it's you or them, you have to pick yourself. For sure. For sure. And, you know, one amazing thing, one very, you know, 
important aspect is that something that attracted to, uh, me to Islam was the behavior of, of my friend, his principles, his discipline. So if if you're Muslim and you're, you don't want to upset non-Muslims by not partaking in certain things, you need to think to yourself, like, this person is going to respect you a lot more for standing by your principles than just, uh, you know, falling for anything they want you to do. Mm. That's very I agree. great. 100%, 100%. And Omar, man, he writes, the more you come close to Allah, the greater the trial. It reminds me of uh, Allah saying that, you know, do do they think they're going to say, I believe, and, and, you know, they won't be tested. So, yeah. honestly, man, I feel like before Islam, there's a fitna. After Islam, there's a fitna. And this this dunya is is prison, bro, for the believer. Yeah. And paradise for those, uh, you know, that are disbelievers and just make their, their nafs, their rub, bro. And that's at the end of the day, that's that's all we could do is just be patient and just have sabr and just have tawakal yeah. that everything we're doing, Allah is gonna you know reward us for that. And may Allah keep us firm in that too, because there's a lot of people just blindly believing that, you know. But there's another level of iman that you genuinely understand, okay, cool, I'm turning this down in the dunya, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything anyway. All this money, all this fame, all these opportunities, if they're not gonna bring me closer to Allah, they really don't matter. Yeah, I want to Exactly. And and nothing, you know, nothing that uh, Islam tells us not to do. Uh, everything that Islam tells us not to do is for a reason. Allah has chosen this for a reason. And we can see the, the, the benefits in our in our in our life in our lives right now. Like we can see the benefits of not drinking alcohol, not smoking, not you know, zina, uh, gambling, all of these things. They have so many many uh, harms that come from them like you know they're destroyers of society like these things okay people may say in moderation but who's to determine the criteria for what moderation is and what moderation isn't you know mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. We had a we had a brother by the name of Firaz Zahabi on the podcast. Yes, and I'm sure you know Firaz. Zahabi, I love that bro. podcast. I love, I love that brother for the sake of Allah, bro. And yeah. when we when we had him on, bro, Subhanallah, like Inshallah, the viewers got as much benefit as we did because people don't know how much benefit that we get, you know, compared to just all the viewers. So I can only imagine. But I myself, I gained tremendous value from just even being here, you know, as a host. But Firaz, brother Firaz said one thing. He said that, you know, bro, I don't know why, but my mind just went blank, bro. I pulled it on hell. I literally had that thought, bro, in my head, and it just went away. But I'll bring it up if I if I do remember. But on me, bro. Oh, man, no problem. No worries. Uh, did you have something to say? You understand? Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> you're welcome to ask me questions. I've actually got questions for you, bro, inshallah. I thought I'd prefer, uh, prepare a few things. All right. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, and, and to any of the viewers that made it this far, if you're wondering where Anhel is, the brother has COVID, you know, and may Allah grant him shifa and make it easy for him and inshallah grant him to be back on the podcast ASAP, you know, yeah. so please make some dua for him and inshallah you will see him on Monday. If not, then inshallah definitely by Friday. Okay, question time. <laughs> Let's go for it, bro. So, you know, I think whether we're born into Islam or whether we accept Islam at a later age, I think I, and I believe we all have that one point where we acknowledge that Islam is the truth. So I'm interested to know when that was for you. Mm -hmm. Rami, bro, why don't you go first? All right, Bismillah. So, you know, SubhanAllah, I think there's, there's a fair amount of similarities between your story and my story, Brother Sam. Although I was born in Tamil Muslim family, alhamdulillah, I was, and I was brought up upon it. I wasn't very practicing. And I didn't have that, the proper aqidah established, the proper belief established. Uh, but, you know, subhanAllah, one day, and keep in mind, I went to a Catholic school. So that's the kind of mm -hmm. education I was getting. I was reading uh, some parts of the Bible in, religious, in religion class and all that stuff and talking about their beliefs about, you know, all that stuff. So I... I was on YouTube one day and I don't know why, because I didn't really watch Islamic stuff at all. But on my explore page on YouTube, I remember seeing a video that it just intrigued me. It said, you know, how Satan came to be or the creation of Satan or something like that. And I was like, okay, you know, that's interesting. 
I know that in, in Christianity, they believe it's a fallen angel. And um, I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. So I went and I watched it. And then the, the way they spoke and everything they spoke about and everything, res referencing the Quran, it was just not really what I imagined it to be. So I was like, you know what? That's very interesting. It's amazing. It's kind of, they also talked about, you know, there could be creations out, outside that we don't know about and kind of like referring to them as like aliens. It could be aliens and that stuff. I thought that was interesting. So I, I kept going and I got to the speaker corner videos as well. I got to the Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and, and all that stuff. And uh, and I think this was around the time when like Ali Dawa was going toe to toe with like Tommy Robinson and uh, Jada, whatever her name is, the Islamophobic, uh, you know, older white lady. And all these people, I'm like, you know, subhanAllah, this, this is amazing. And then I got to the David Wood videos and I got to like those videos. So I'm like, oh, this is not so amazing. I'm like, well, what's going on here, man? What's this? And then I got to the responses from the Muslims towards those people. I'm like, wow, they just like, like swept the floor at them. Like they blew them, not just out of the water, they blew them out of the ocean. And they're like, like they're done. And mm. I'm like, they're not back from those responses. So I'm like, you know, this is amazing. This is the truth. And then I kept learning and practicing. And I started debating people at my, my Catholic school as well. I still remember very vivid memories, bro, of like debating people on the bus on a way to a field trip downtown. Mm. And it was fun, bro. I, I really enjoyed it, alhamdulillah. But that's, that's what brought me to Islam. Allahumma barik. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. By the way, brothers, I remembered what I was going to say about Firaz Zahabi. So pertaining to your thing about alcohol and where do you draw the line, that's, that's one thing, bro. That in and of itself, that idea that I know when to stop or I can distinguish left and right sometimes, you know, when it gets blurry. Mm -hmm. And I know what is too much. We don't. And Firaz Zabi was saying every single thing, more or less, that's haram, destroys the family, if you really mm. think about it, bro. Now, when it comes to me, all right, I'm not going to, you know, Allah puts a blanket over our sins, so we shouldn't unnecessarily, you know, just expose them for the sake of. So, you know, and there's there's times when it's wise, you know, to prove a point. But for this one, I'm going to, you know, sit out. But what I will say is I was doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing, obviously, you know. And a lot of people are like, what do you mean, should, shouldn't, by Allah, you know based on the standards that Allah has set forth. Mm. I was doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing and it was destroying me, right? Mentally, physically, it was really destroying me. And I let it get too far, all right? And when it was too far, I wasn't too practicing. I wasn't praying. I wasn't, you know. And I remember I made one dua to Allah, right? In that state, bro, in that state where I was just not physically, mentally on 10. And I was like, Ya Allah, if you're listening, um, help me feel normal. Help me feel steady. Help me feel, just just give me my life back. Just help me feel a glimpse of hope. And I'm never going to be doing what I was doing, you know? And I made dua. I was very sincere. And as a man, it was, it was as if I made like a, a promise or a pact with Allah, a covenant. You know, I was just like, you know, if you could just help me, please Allah, I'll never do, you know, any of these things again. And I'll mm. never be, you know, repeating these mistakes and so on and so forth. So because of that, you know, truth be told, and I know it sounds like a fairy tale, bro, but subhanAllah, instantly I felt this rush of iman and just normalcy and stability. And I kid you not, it's that in that moment, that state, just getting that delivery from Allah. Bear in mind, Allah doesn't owe us anything, bro. So the fact that Allah gave me that instantly, um, almost the fear of, should I try to test Allah again? Should I try to, you know, go back to that and see what happens? And what if it, it gets worse? And how would I be, you know, if on the day of judgment, Allah says, and Allah tells me, you know, when you cried for help, when you repented and you and you wanted to go back on your, on you know, and I helped you, you still went back to the fire, you know, and I, I would be left, bro. I wouldn't know what to say because at that point, it generally would have been on me, you know, so it just kept me on Dean, bro. And since then, Alhamdulillah, it was just an uphill thing. I left all those things. You know, I met brothers like Rami that genuinely had a, a marvelous impact on my life. So may Allah bless Rami and all the other brothers and sisters, I mean, for all the work they do. And yeah. Alhamdulillah, bro, looking back at it, it's crazy because I was really reflecting as Rami was giving you his answer. You know, because when you first asked, what was your defining moment? I was like, bro, for me, it was probably progressive. You know, it wasn't like one thing. Yes. If I really think about it, that was genuinely the cornerstone, bro. MashaAllah. Amazing. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. So, yo, I have a question for you before we go on, all right? That's so, cool. before Islam, me and Anhel, right? I can't speak on Rami because 
you know, I specifically spoke about this to Angel one day, but I'm pretty sure Rami can agree. Um, a lot of men, they find being humble as being weak, right? And pre deen right, for us, uh, or at least for me, and pre-Islam for Anhal, right, we thought that, you know, being humble was a weakness. But after Islam, after immersing ourselves and, and doing our best to fully submit to Allah, bro, humility is just something natural to the fitrah. Mm -hmm. And just being kind, just being genuine. No thought in my mind comes across that it's weakness or anything. Mm -hmm. Have you had a similar experience to that? I definitely think so. Um, even now after Islam, like, no longer am I worried about, oh, did I say the wrong thing to this person? Is this person going to come and try something now because I behaved in this manner? Or did I say, yeah, you know, like... Do I have a problem with this person? Alhamdulillah, I can sleep now knowing, you know, I've done my best not to uh, anger anyone. I've been, tried to be kind to people. And this is a very uh, calming thought. It's very calming because you don't you don't need to worry about anything you do. Look, if you follow what Allah has has set for you as guidelines, then this is protection in, it, in and of, of itself, you know? So yeah. Okay. Allah barak fiq, bro. Now to anyone watching that made it this far, we got uh, 15 ish minutes left on the stream. Ask any of your questions that you want, brother Sam, to answer, and inshallah we'll facilitate that. Um aside from that, bro, tell us about learning Arabic, bro. Your tajweed, mashallah, is is definitely on par with with no, some, like some you know imams at the masajid, bro. And I'm not just saying that, you know, just to you know boast you or anything like that, but genuinely, mashallah. It's, it's definitely something that's not, you know, I don't see too often in, in a lot of reverts two or three years in. So what steps have you taken to genuinely, you know, step up your Arabic game? Firstly, may Allah bless you. But it's really not this level, I promise. <laughs> I will, inshallah, one day, but it's, alhamdulillah. So firstly, the brother that that uh, played a huge role in steps in Islam, not only did he play that role, but he's stayed with me throughout the whole journey and he's taught me you know how to read quran how to recite properly he he still teaches me tajweed up until this day so without him i would not be in the position i'm in not even close and on top of this of course i do my own studies like uh i have a teacher online and and i try to uh, practice in my own time so alhamdulillah like you know, Allah just has made everything very easy for me, alhamdulillah. Like, really facilitated. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Rami, bro, do you have any questions or uh, do you want me to go in on boxing? Go in, go in, inshallah. All right, man. Sam, tell us about boxing, man. And just in general, just fitness, martial arts, because I'm into that and, and Rami's into that, Anhel's into that. Mm -hmm. We're all advocates of that. And a lot of viewers wondering, they're, they're here like, okay, yo, I get it, bro. Fitness, fitness, fitness. But the akhirah is the only thing that matters. Dunya, it doesn't really matter. We shouldn't, you know, as long as you have your deen, it doesn't matter how you look. What are your thoughts on on just really working on yourself in terms of athleticism, functionality, fitness? Why do you do it? And, you know, where are you at? Cool. So I think there's a lot to unpack here. But the main points I would like, you know, to focus on is that fitness is not just some side aspect of islam fitness is is a huge huge part of islam like someone uh, religious you'd think of them you may think of them as someone who studies all the time uh, prays all the time fasts all the time but if that person isn't looking after the body that allah has loaned to them because remember we don't own this this is what allah has given us for a temporary period of time and we need to look after it the way it should be looked after using the guidelines that Allah has has set for us so fitness is a is a huge aspect of Islam and strengthening the body having good nutrition these are, all play fundamental roles not just physically but for mental uh, health as well um, training is 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 integral and training you know m like physically mentally but spiritually also you know, when you're eating good food and you're you're fit, you're healthy, you can do more ibadah. You can, 
you can be more productive. You can spend more time with Quran because you have the right fuel in your body. You have the right energy in your body. So there's so many aspects to unpack, but uh, to unpack. But wallahi, it's, it's not something to be uh, played down. Like fitness is a huge, huge, as a huge aspect of Islam. Now, obviously, we do need to find the balance because we don't want to just go to the gym and and get big for to look good like or, or the muslim should definitely look good and, and be presentable but when it starts going to the ego side of things then it becomes a bit of a problem and yeah this is a challenge that i'm sure all of us face in the fitness community because uh you know we're trying to build our platforms and 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 sometimes this this you, it's a it's a constant uh battle of your your with your knee like you need to have mm -hmm. your intention correct um so those are you know some the main points that i would i would uh bring up inshallah what what do you guys think i mean habibi you know how you were recalling all those all those people that were on dean and until you met muslims that genuinely put their money where their mouth was you know they they walk the walk not just mm. talk the talk you couldn't really take the the dean seriously right so yeah. think about it like this you see someone that's out of shape and i know today you know there's all this propaganda on body shaming and all this nonsense but bear in mind all right you see someone that's out of shape Okay, I get it. You know, people are going to be like, what if they have a metabolic disease? What if all this what about is a aside, right? The general population that has an obesity problem, it's usually indicative of a lack of self-control and discipline mm -hmm. and self-respect, right? And all of these things are things that we, believe it or not, we judge people by. And usually if you want to give da'wah or you want to propagate the deen or you have any type of motive that you have, whether it's dunya or akhirah, people are more likely to just believe you and respect you and 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 see that transparency if they know you take yourself seriously. Because how are they going to take you seriously if you don't take yourself seriously? Very good point. Very, very good point. Yeah. Rami, bro, what about you? I honestly don't have much to add. I think the points you made, mashallah, kind of covered it all. That's enough, you know, for, for people to, to, to get the point that they need to take care of the, you know, the, the vessel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has filled their soul with. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Rami, <clears throat> Sam, how much time do you guys have today? Uh, as much as you want, inshallah. Well, Rami, uh, you know, Rami what about you? you um, sorry, sorry, say that one more time. I just said it's late in the UK, but you've got all my time, inshallah. Don't it's, worry. It's definitely late. Rami, what about you? I actually have to get going uh, because the uh, tafsir tonight. Tafsir okay, class. okay. No worries. So you mean like you're done now, right? Okay. In that case, Rami, it was a pleasure. I'm going to stay with the brother. We'll do a quick Q&A. But uh, in terms of Rami, man, Jazakallah khair for uh, all the benefit you brought today and always, Rami. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on Monday. Inshallah, you're my love. I love you both for the sake of Allah. So Allah see you guys soon. Wa and warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right, bro. So Sam, while I go to the YouTube, uh, you know, comment section, live chat, change it from members only to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you answer this question, inshallah? Oh, um. I don't think I can say you know because I haven't read any of them uh, fully. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to skip this one, inshallah. I've never read all of them fully. Okay, alhamdulillah, it should be open to subscribers only now instead of members. So anyone have your questions, let's go. Um, let's see, this 1 a.m. in the UK, I think. Definitely, man, it's super late. Um, let's see, where's uh, insert clickbait? So you said you had a question, if you don't mind uh, letting us know the question. There we go. Are you boxing professionally? And if so, what weight class do you compete in? Okay, so uh, the title is a bit misleading because I'm not a boxer myself. I'm a, I'm a boxing coach. Um, I'm a boxing coach, but I love boxing, uh, the training aspect of boxing. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah. All right, next. Will you both come to Malaysia? I would love to come to Malaysia, inshallah, if that's an invite. Inshallah. inshallah, I would love to come too, bro. Uh, a close friend of ours, brother Gabriel Romani, he lives in Malaysia, so would definitely like to go. Wa alaikum assalam to everyone. Okay, next, Radwan asks, who's your favorite boxer? Of all time, Muhammad Ali. In all time? Okay, what about right now? Like recently? Right now, uh, 
I'm a Tyson Fury fan, to be honest. All right, all right. You guys heard it first. Nabil, how can we stop overthinking when playing a sport? Maybe like performance anxiety and the likes. Um, I think probably just have your goals clear. Um, know know what you need to do in your sport. It's quite a vague question, so I'm not really sure how to answer that too well. But just know, you know, have have your objectives in mind. Mm, okay, so even though you are not a professional boxer, you just love boxing. Mm. How has impact? Uh, how has Islam impacted it? So, for an example, if someone would have asked me that for fitness, I would say, okay, I just don't wear shorts that show my aura. You know, like mm. just for example, what are things that you could come up with? Yeah, so things like this. Uh, one thing I'm I'm very uh, adamant on is not using music in my uh, videos. So, for example when i'm filming uh, my boxing you know shadow boxing or uh, coaching clients i won't use any music in my videos and i think this is something like you don't need to to uh, sacrifice on your principles just to get a few more extra views and things like this so i think that's quite a beneficial point to mention inshallah i love that sam i love that because <laughs> people are thinking logically bro but how are we going to use logic to dictate allah bro allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala transcends logic bro Logic is something we created, yeah. bro. Because think about it. Logically, why should we turn down a job that's going to make us more money? Mm -hmm. Given that it's haram, you know? Logically, why should we not listen to music and put music on our on our videos if it gets us more views? Logically, mm -hmm. right? But they don't realize, bro, that logic plays no role here. It's turning these things down for the sake of Allah. Whether it be putting music to get more views. Whether it be making, I don't know, putting women in your thumbnails to get more views. Or taking on a job that has a lot of money, bro, but it's haram. It's turning these things down that will give you the barakah from Allah. It's not doing these things and getting a punish, you know, getting a sin and potentially getting punished, bro. It's not worth it, you know? Mm. And also acknowledging that the laws of Allah are, you know, they're firm in place, just like the laws of gravity. There's certain things that will have certain consequences, Um so you do yeah as the brother said you really don't need to compromise uh, compromise your deen 100 to accept our god amen 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 okay next question let's see assalamualaikum brother may allah bless you and keep you firm do you think i can get into boxing at 24 years old any age inshallah any age inshallah any age inshallah it's never too late never too late Abdullah, have your parents seen a positive change in your life? MashaAllah. This is one of my brothers, uh, Abdul Manam. MashaAllah. May Allah bless him. Uh, I'd have to ask them, but I'd hope so. I definitely hope so. Mm. Well, just just for... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, look, when you, when you used to come back from clubs at 4 a.m. Uh, drunk, and then you're coming back from the masjid at 4 a.m., I'm sure there's uh <laughs> they would prefer the second definitely 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 all right besides boxing do you have interest in any other kind of self-defense sport such as taekwondo silat karate etc so me personally i've never actually uh tried anything else i've tried uh, muay thai one time <sighs> but i'm you know it wasn't for me <laughs> bro bro listen if i yeah. tried muay thai too i'm not gonna speak for the choir but me personally it wasn't for me when I got into jujitsu, bro, it just stuck with me. Mashallah. So I really recommend trying it out, bro. This is, you know, jujitsu is something I really, really want to try. Really want to try. Bro, definitely. And, and, and before I give the next question, you're doing boxing, bro. I did a little bit of boxing and I noticed that it's very similar to Muay Thai in the sense it's like mm. speed and, and footwork and all that. But when you when you really do jujitsu, there's a lot of strategy involved, bro. It's mentally like exhausting, bro. Like when yeah. I do Muay Thai, I don't know if this is just me, but I physically feel exhausted. And mentally, I feel released, relieved, you know? But when mm. I do jujutsu, I feel mentally exhausted too, bro. Like, it takes a, a, another level of just, you know, rewiring your brain and, and strategy, bro. Definitely. No, so I'll definitely. Bro. All right. This is a general question. I have heard doing professional boxing, I think because the face gets harmed. So we made a lot of videos on this and we're not, you know, scholars. So we're not going to give any fatawa here. Um, no <laughs> no comment yeah question who's winning the khan versus brook fight tomorrow 
Oh, I won't can't win. I won't uh, can't win. Yeah, but okay. we'll see. Alhamdulillah. Okay, what about judo? Have you ever done any judo? No, never done judo. What about calisthenics? Wow, I love calisthenics. Yes, um, and and you know what it is. Being able to to lift weights is good, but being able to move your own body weight this is the important thing. Because if you can bench press a hundred kilos, but you can't even do five pull ups, what are you mm-hmm. training for? You know, because you need strength that can be applied into real life situations. Um, so yeah, I'm very, uh, um, I'm a big advocate of uh, calisthenics. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. All right, bro. While we wrap it up, do you have any last questions for me? <sighs> I don't think I've got any questions. I've got a few bits of uh, final points for the audience, inshallah. Go for it then. Now's the time. So, number one, if you, you know, for the non-Muslims, if you're following any ideology that doesn't provide proof for its reality, then you need to question it. You need to question why you believe what you believe. Because one day you're going to die and you don't know where you're going. And... Uh, it's very clear that, that there's more to life than than what we think there is. Mm. So, you know, find a, a, an ideology, the only ideology that provides uh, untouchable proof for its reality. And that's Islam. So do your research. And don't assume that you've got time either, because we all think we've got time, but we don't. And we're going to die. And, yeah, if anyone's got any... Uh, you know questions or or want uh, some you know they're interested in islam then i'm always open for for uh, questions inshallah and fired i'm sure that's the same with you as well 100 percent, 100 percent, bro 100 percent. so guys if you made it this far i should say this way hit up instagram find the barnet vision wonderful work that i'm seeing on his page give it a follow support his work inshallah and we'll get through the last questions and end the stream bro i look forward to having you again inshallah very soon okay so next uh let's see okay okay let's see this okay brother if someone is 30 pounds overweight should that person lose it first before starting boxing no in my opinion no i think anyone can start start boxing at any time boxing in you know it doesn't require you to be slim like boxing is going to help you lose weight so i i think this is probably from shaitan like just delaying your 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 mm. your fitness journey for longer so start as soon as possible inshallah inshallah i'm um, brother muhammad writes how to adopt or adapt with emotions of loneliness and voids when you started? It's a good question, but alhamdulillah, like I was never lonely because I had amazing brothers around me from the beginning. So I don't think that I'm the best person to answer that. Okay, alhamdulillah. Next, have you ever personally physically been to Speaker's Corner? Because you mentioned you watched the yeah. videos. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And it's <laughs> it's a crazy place, but there's some gems there. There's some there's definitely some gems there. Um if you go on the right day, then you know you can listen to some very fruitful discussions, mashallah. And may Allah bless all the uh you know, all the uh, debaters or you know, not debaters, but people dais, like people who are uh, doing work for Islam. Hmm. I mean bro, I mean and all the duat, bro, not just the ones we see but just the ones we also don't see, bro, because how many of them are just, they're doing private dawah, you know, they're doing the siha, they're, they're doing the the bread and butter, but they're not just out here with the followers and with the likes. So may Allah keep us all steadfast, and keep us all yeah. humble, and keep us all, you know, grateful that Allah guided us, bro. Because subhanAllah, yeah. at the end of the day, Allah didn't owe us anything, bro. But Allah saw something in us and, and saw potential and, and decided to guide us. So may Allah allow us to never take that for granted and, and never test Allah, you know, and just, just keep passing all of Allah's tests that Allah throws our way. Because at the end of the day, that's all we could do, bro. We're here for a limited amount of time. Just like you said, we don't know when our time is going to come to passing. And all we could do is live every day like it's our last. And for your fitness thing, man, if anyone has any questions on boxing, you want to take your boxing to the next level, go on Instagram, check out the Barnett Vision, one word. And inshallah, he'll take care of you. Inshallah, inshallah. All right, Aki. I'm going to let you sleep, bro. It's very late. Happy. Um, 
been a yeah. pleasure wallahi thank you for having me alhamdulillah bro alhamdulillah thank you for being here bro all right assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bro wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh